been 14 years since the Cuban Missile Crisis, but with the present situation in Angola, Prime Minister Trudeau's visit to Cuba this week was regarded as a bit dicey politically. His entourage thought the trip came off very well. They were very impressed by a certain quality of Premier Castro's, and it's a familiar word, charisma. Sixteen years ago, Pierre Trudeau tried to paddle a canoe from Miami to Havana, but he was turned back by American authorities. This time he made it and was royally welcomed. Hours before his arrival, Cubans by the tens of thousands lined the streets. Such enthusiasm was sustained for the three-day visit and was clearly orchestrated by Premier Castro himself. It was his way of expressing gratitude to Canada for continued trade throughout the blockade. With relations between Cuba and the United States going sour again because of Angola, Premier Castro was eager to strengthen the Canadian-Cuban connection. At a rally in the south coastal city of Cienfuegos, not even a five-hour wait under a blazing sun could diminish the enthusiasm of 25,000 sugarcane workers who chanted, Long live friendship between Cuba and Canada. The charismatic presence of Dr. Castro is always a drawing card for Cubans, but adding a fluently Spanish speaking leader like Trudeau made it an event few wanted to miss. Brotherhood and independence were the impressions both leaders wanted to convey to the world. Informal talks at an island hideaway intensified their respect for each other, and their mutual enjoyment of skin diving added to the rapport. The controversial issue of Angola was debated, and Premier Castro defended his position at a Canadian reception. He pointed out that much of his country's population is of African extraction. And so a call for solidarity from Angolans to help defend their country against South African invaders justified his support. We cannot do anything better than to help the Angolan people. Historically, it has been proved that it was the South Africans and the Zaire troops who began Angola's invasion. Chronologically. Canada has seen the Angolan conflict as a civil war between various factions within the country and therefore disapproves of foreign intervention. I certainly came out of the talk with a much greater knowledge uh, of uh, the assessment of the African situation viewed from the particular socialist point of view of Premier Castro. And I hope that he uh, also benefited from some of the ideas and arguments that I put forward. To have a major impact in the international political arena, there was an immense effort to impress Trudeau, and many diplomatic observers believe his visit gave Cuba tentative world status as a legitimate and responsible state, an enormous lift. Castro is a dedicated revolutionary, no doubt about it. But as much as it's an old political ploy to hug babies, the Trudeau's youngest son, Michel, wasn't the only one to sense that Castro is not the fanatic, unfeeling leader many think him to be. Mr. Trudeau said there were no anti-American undertones to his visit, although it has ruffled many feathers in Washington. His mission was to diversify Canadian dependence on trade with the United States. And Premier Castro was just as eager to diversify Cuban dependence on the Soviet Union. The two leaders now have a personal relationship that ultimately trickles down to intensify people-to-people -people contact. A welcome thought to Canadian tourists, Havana-bound. 